بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم آئی ایم ڈاکٹر محب اللہ وزیر اینڈ دا ٹاپک از دی میمبرینس لیبرینت میمبرینس لیبرینت از دی ریپلیکا آف دا بونی لیبرینت نوٹ دی پوائنٹ دیٹس وائی اٹ کنسسٹ آف look blue the cochlear duct contained inside the bony cochlea and then it consists of the secule and the utricle in contained inside the vestibule and then it consists of this semicircular duct contained inside the semicircular canals and this whole membranous labyrinth cochlea utricular secule and the semicircular duct it all contains the endolymph while this white boiler labyrinth it contains the perilymph and this membranous duct is embedded or contained inside the bony labyrinth and surrounded by the perilymph and this the inner surface of this membranous labyrinth it is being lined by epithelium The inner surface of this membranous labyrinth, that is the cochlea and this utricular secule and semicircular duct, is lined by epithelium, and this epithelium is specified into receptor cells for sound or hearing in the cochlea and for the utibule and semicircular canal over here this epithelium is being modified into receptor cells for balance these receptor cells which are present in the cochlear duct these are concerned with hearing supplied by the cochlear part of the vestibulo cochlear nerve while these the receptors in the utricular and secular semicircular duct that are receptors for the balance, kinetic and static balance is being supplied by the vestibular part of the vestibulo cochlear nerve. Now the cochlear duct is a duct which is being part of the membrane embedded inside the cochlea. Now the cochlear duct which is a spiral duct made up of membrane embedded in the cochlea embedded in the cochlea and contains the endolymph it commences it commences from the apex of the cochlea and then turns upon itself having to full and three and a half tone and then ultimately ends in a dilated end which is called as the bulbous in the basal tone of the cochlea and then this bulbous part of the cochlear duct is being connected to the secule present in the vestibule by a duct which is called as ductus reunion ductus reunion connects the bulbous or dilated part of the cochlear duct to the secule Okay, then cochlear duct, look, this is the cochlear, this triangular in shape, this is the cochlear duct and it is connected at one end you can see to the basal spiral lamina, at one end it is connected to the spiral lamina. And at another end, this triangular cochlear duct is being connected to the inner surface of the bony labyrinth. In this way, in this way, 
dividing the bony labyrinth into two parts, the scala vestibuli and scala tympani. Then look, the cochlear duct by itself is triangular in shape and it is bounded on one side by this membrane which is basilar membrane which is in line with spiral lamina and it supports this spiral organ of corti and on another side it is bounded by this vestibular membrane thin vestibular membrane or also called as Risner's membrane and on the outer side it is bounded by this membrane which is called a spiral ligament in this way the triangular shape cochlear duct is bounded by this vestibular membrane basal membrane and spiral ligament note the spiral organ of corti which lies on the basal membrane it consists of the sensory hair cells these sensory hair cells which are the actually receptors sensory receptors for hearing and this sensory receptor for hearing or sensory hair cells these are being supplied you can see by branches from this spiral ganglion that in right side of it you can see it reaches to this spiral these sensory organs or sensory hair cells and these sensory hair cells it is from above overlaid by this membrane which is called as membrana tectoria or tectorial membrane and note the point that the sound the sound waves which comes from the tympanic membrane look the sound waves which comes from the tympanic membrane to the ossicles of the middle ear through the oval window to ultimately reaches ultimately reaches to the perilymph and the perilymph left start vibration and then this vibration from the perilymph is being transmitted through this vestibular arisen membrane to the endoleph present in the cochlear duct and this endoleph start vibration and ultimately this sensory hair cells or receptor cells for sound or for hearing these are being stimulated and then this stimulation from the sensory hair cells or receptor for hearing these are being conveyed by the cochlear part of the vestibular nerve to the brain or hearing center and note how the Allah has been arranged so beautifully that the vibration of the tympanic membrane being transmitted to the sensory hair cells and this start to vibrate and from this it is being conveyed this vibration is being conveyed by the cochlear nerve to the brain and the brain interpret this vibration in the form of sound or words what a strange arrangement being done by almighty allah we should be thankful that the vibration is being ultimately conveyed to our brain or hear center in the form of words which we understand and consciously appreciate the words but these are being conveyed by the vibration from the very left to the endoleph in the cochlear duct from the cochlear duct the endoleph is stimulated the vibration the sensory hair cells at the basal membrane and then taken by the cochlear nerve okay then the other part of the membrane labyrinth that is the utricular and secule and semicircular ducts we will deal in the next lecture thank you very much